All right, guys. I think we got all these frame rate things taken care of as we move into map number two. If you're just joining us, this is the I by Power Summer Invitational. And uh, it's Echo Fox V, Winter Fox Mirage underway. Pistol round. And look at the aggression coming in from the CTs. Pushing like way out in uh, in mid through underpass. Problem is they're all going to go pushing up through apps and giving up full control of mid. Winter Fox able to work their way straight into the A site without without so much as a challenge sprawl. What is happening? Yeah, I don't mind the strategy at all for Michael Fox. They push four to get a decent engagement towards the apartments and then they play retake towards this A bomb site and it turns into a two on one as we can see. It's only Hades left up to try and cover this bomb plant taking a duel but he loses it versus Shazam. So that's going to be the round right there. Haven't seen that sort of aggression on a CT pistol round in a long time. That's for certain. It, it looked very much like um, B-bomb site on cash where you see CTs play. Uh, they'll, they'll play one towards truck as a retake. And a lot of players will push through B-main to try and get that early aggression. And if there is players there, you just hope that the engagement goes your way. So uh, again, they send two through apartments, two through underpass. Again, a four on one versus XP3. And then they're able to work their way back. So I don't actually mind that they give up the rest of the map control uh, to take that uh, calculated fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I suppose so. I mean, that was, that was positively nutty. I, I, I'm i surprised that Echo Fox was able to do it because Winter Fox had enough time to just walk into the site, plant the bomb, and then set up. They, they had the time to get into decent post-plant positions, but hey, not going to happen this time around. Um, Winter Fox setting up uh, not much of a force buy. Looks like they're planning on doing a third round buy over here, setting up for mid-control. Shazam's going to find himself in trouble. Gets his head taken off by Hades. Mid-control now granted once again to Winter Fox, uh, but they can't just walk right into a site this time around. They're going to have to worry about uh, a couple of CTs pushing into B. There we go. Player advantage for the two side. Rick's able to take down Hades. Freakazoid alive and well inside of the apartments. And they are able to uh, get the round in the end. So, giving up two frags, but uh, no bomb plant for the T side. And as we can see, they got the bomb plant in the first. Didn't invest too much in that second round. But if they got another bomb plant, they would have take a buy with pretty much full utility. So, a little bit lacking. They get a smoke on everyone. Two flashes on the field as well. So we'll see, Winter Fox, this is uh, the benefit, again, of getting that bomb planned in the first. And look at this Echo Fox going four towards B again here. And uh, what kind of weird. setup is it going to be? Two towards Catwalk, two towards Apartments. And yeah, some some interesting uh, positioning right from the get-go. And they're trying to counter this Catwalk play. It's working out quite well for them. It's Flow Sick and XP3 to try and bring this back. But they are very split up. You know, it's going to work out so well for Echo Fox. They, they spotted the bomb right away. So they've got full bomb control. They've got already got the players rotated onto the site. Flowsick opens it up with one more kill. He's not going to expect Freakazoid to be right over here. Freakazoid sees he's picked up the bomb. And boom! Surprise! Just like that. Flowsick is going to get uh, dumped on. Is that the PG way to say it? Why not? XP3 left all alone. Working his way back. Hey, it's a family show. Right. Keeping it PG here as we get XP3. 1v3. And it's not looking likely that he can pull this off. Gares is holding an angle towards underpass, so maybe if XP3 can blindside him, but nope. Uh, the blindsiding going to be uh, going the opposite way. XP3 wandering up the catwalk and does give his back to connector. So that'll be the round. Echo Fox up quick 3 0. And again, that was Winter Fox's buy round, so moving into a save. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is rough right here. Winter Fox, they, they ended up losing Nuke after a really, really hard fought battle. They lost it on an eco over there. And uh, now they're going to start out a little bit down over here on their T side. Economy not quite strong enough after that third round buy to just keep on stringing any more gun rounds. If we hit the old tab button, you can see, uh, yeah, a little tight on the cash. If Winter Fox can somehow pull out a miraculous eco win, though, they're going to wreck uh, Echo Fox's economy. So it's a somewhat important round if they can be crafty and maybe pick up some uh, early frags. See one player lurking on just outside. That's going to be Hades. But what happened over here? Flow Sick works his way on out from uh, underpass. Does a little bit of damage. Uh, a push just going to fall apart. Flow Sick walks into connector. His position's known. It's all up to Ricks to try to hold the line. Long range spray. One, two. And uh, the third player right here is going to be Anger. Finally finishing him off, but the damage is done. Four HP. Here comes Roka. Missing the shot. Yeah, anger. Not looking good for him with four hit points, but 
Maybe you can get some more damage in here as Roka is pre-firing from jungle. His position certainly known as Freakazoid creeps up from CT spawn. As, uh, well, bullet goes into the ticket booth right beside him. And the fire will put Anger out into the center of the bomb site a little bit further. Anger kind of getting the better end of that immediate spray towards Roka. So he doesn't actually take the fight, but eventually Roka overkill with the headshot so rick sad times for him anger was going to be uh if he took him down his ace but uh can't find it quad kill nonetheless and echo fox lots of damage dealt in that round so that's uh good news for the t side but of course it doesn't really make much of a difference if you don't actually take advantage and, and win a round and kind of force the eco to follow it up so big round here for winter fox i mean the question is how, how did anger stay alive as long as he did right there just like picking away doing stuff he's not able to get any final kills but still makes it pretty expensive for echo fox they lost three players right there on that round um didn't quite get a bomb plant right yeah no bomb plants over there uh ak-40 Sevens in the hand of uh, uh, in the hands of Winter Fox as they execute a mid control. Two up top, one down at the bottom, and then they've got the extremity players. That's going to be Lex and uh, of course Hades hanging out outside the ace site. Couple of shots uh, being exchanged over here, but it's all through smoke. Nothing just yet. See Flosick again creeping up the connector, oh. but it's Freakazoid to find first blood from the ladder position. Finds anger. Down towards middle, Ricks, Ricks. is going to follow it up as well. Flow sick. We'll go down. Nice work from Ricks there. As, uh, Winter Fox, this is falling apart. Not looking good on their T side at all. They are so separated after losing those two critical players for connector in middle. Now uh, they've got one towards B. That's Lex actually taking down Roka. That's an opening. So maybe they can make something work there, but he's alone. Um, Freakazoid is not budging either. He's staying towards ladder. So the bomb creeping through middle. If XP3 goes down, that's basically the round with the bomb in mid. See, Roka was uh, was playing that B anchor position there, so they have to expect somebody's got to be out there in mid. XP3 picks Rick, Rick's up. There's an op shot coming off right there, but the real question is, what's Freakazoid going to do? He's sitting out here on the far end, gets spotted out by XP3. The spray is horrible. And uh, Freakso is just going to have to go ahead and retreat. Ooh. It's up to XP3 all alone, working his way on. And he knows he's being chased by Freakso. Loses the firefight with Sean Garris. And no bomb plant for you. So five in a row for Echo Fox. Um, the only thing that we have going for Winter Fox right now is the fact that the economy is not out of control for the CT side. Considering they've got five in a row, you can see the, the largest... Sum of money on the CT front is 2500 on Shazam. So, uh, again, they are yeah. not in a safe position. Winter Fox will force by a couple of Galils making it in with full loss bonus. And uh, not a bad decision, considering the fact that they've kept the economy so close. Could force an eco if they take this round. And it looks like they'll commit to a heavy A-side play. We'll see a, a ramp smoke come in. Not a great one. Shazam, okay, maybe that was designed as such. Shazam is actually peeking oh. through the side of it and finds Flow 6, so... Kind of answered my question now, didn't it? As uh, just playing off the edge of it. And now down a player, Winter Fox. That's not how they wanted to start the round at all. No, no, not one bit. Nice use of the smoke over there. High risk play for Shazam, certainly, but it's going to work Roka out. Look at Roka. Through mid. Yeah, well, I mean, no one's watching the B side over here, so that's going to let Roka just start working his way all the way on up. Takes the flank, and now look at all this pressure being put on. Echo Fox can start to get aggressive as Winter Fox question themselves what's happening behind. They have to turn around, and uh, they're just cut down to size just like that. That was so tragic. It's a buy round over there for Winter Fox, and uh, they don't have much money, even though we're sitting here at max loss bonus. Uh, they got $3,500. You could certainly force buy here. Uh, force buy down to, let's say, $1,900, even $1,800, and you get a decent buy going in next round. But something has got to change, and, uh, well, you see, match pause. It has to be. It has to be a uh, tactical timeout by Winter Fox, right? Oh, certainly. Yeah, no, they have called for a tactical here, and I, I think this is a great decision at this point in the match. I don't even know how much they'll be talking about. Obviously, there's a little bit of strategic talk in there, but I think just cooling their heads after a round like the last one, it, that was uh, it was ridiculous. <laughs> they, they go for an A-side play, and nothing's more frustrating than having your set play be spoiled early by players getting aggressive and peeking into you, so... Again, Roka coming into T-Spawn, Shazam getting that early pick. It fell apart before it was, it was even anything. So, 
Um, uh, not a good spot here for Winter Fox. They move into a, a light buy because they have full loss bonus. This will still give them enough money to buy fully in the next round. But uh, wow, that was an awkward block too. I have no idea what that was, but a uh, little bit of a, a traffic jam going on. the apartments. Yeah, certainly. A whole, whole lot of knifing going on this game so far. Rick oh, I didn't even notice that. that. I, was, I, I was totally mentioning the fact that there was like two T's running face first into each other. I didn't recognize that Rick's got <laughs> knife. So sad oh, time. Nice. Team Knife, that's what it's all about. XP3 just walking way the heck out there with a pistol. Takes a firefight with uh, Freakazoid. Does a good deal of damage over there. Actually, well, doesn't, doesn't even tag it off. Just fires a whole lot. It doesn't even matter. Look at this. Echo Fox, they know they're on an anti-eco. They're going to set up a strong uh, uh, mid-control defense. And then once they realize that they've got a little bite, they're going to come charging on in. Pull back on the reel, and uh, Winter Fox is going to take it. Hook, line, and sinker. Seven and oh. Hey, it was an anti-eco for Echo Fox. Now we'll see what Winter Fox discussed on that timeout. Yeah, the problem is the last two rounds have been flawless for Echo Fox. So that comeback ability for Winter Fox, where they've got that economy low, it's no longer uh, a luxury for them. They, they really need to battle back multiple rounds to be able to force an eco round. So not a fun spot when you're hurting to just get one round of the board. Never mind stringing them together. As we'll see some uh, heavy mid presence from the T's. We've got two towards top middle. Glowstick working his way up underpass. The bomb's still way back towards B apartments with Lex actually creeping inside of the apartments at the top of the underpass stairs. So interesting spread out round yet again here from Winter Fox. Nothing, uh, nothing too crazy in terms of an execute. Glowstick again will work some connector control, but he's not actually going to work his way up on top of the box, which we've seen him do previously. He's actually going to fall back out of middle. They all fall out of middle. And this is going to be their A-side play yet again, just uh, some middle play to, to come in before their A-side take. So we'll see how this goes. All right. You see them starting to group up over here. Where, the question is, where is this player? That's going to be Anger sitting up uh, just outside. Shazam takes the first kill, XP3. That puts pressure on uh, oh, this is Winter so Fox. Sick. Yeah, Rick. Oh, look at this. Turns it into a He's 2K. No one able to make the trade. Kill. That was just huge mind games as Anger falls in middle. Shazam finds an uh, opening man. pick, and then he drops an incendiary in a way that, if you're the T side, you fully expect an aggressive op there, and he dropped an incendiary to retreat to uh, to go back to uh, another position. So yeah. they, they kind of half-checked where uh, the posted-up player was, but it wasn't enough. Triple kill comes in, and Echo Fox continue their dominance. Yeah, it's one of those things where, exactly, a half check. You, you have, like, almost sweep the mouse over, but you're already turning away by the time you become cognitively aware that Ricks is standing right there. And, and, and turning it into a triple, just like, I mean, the first kill, sure. The second one, amazing. The third, come on. You got to do something. Winter Fox still have uh, a little bit of an economy rolling for them based on the, the massive loss bonus going on. Shazam posted it up. Shot is going to be good for XP3. Think he tagged him up just through the wall. It's going to put Chaz in a very awkward position. Blind as a bat, stuck inside that little corner. And uh, that gives Sanger with a kill. So you get a little man advantage going on. But now Rix takes it right back. Yeah, nice work from Jungle here as Roka's got to follow it up. So that's mid control now to the CTs. Lex takes down Gares. But Rick's able to fire back and he follows it up on Alex. Only XP3. And he will follow oh. Rick's as well. So another quad kill for Rick's. This time on a rifle round. Very impactful play is Echo Fox again. They're not giving up anything. And Winter Fox, uh, it's, looking, uh, it's looking very bleak for them at this point. They should have to save here, believe it or not. Uh, obviously, light buy would ensue as they've got full loss bonus. But... This is just, uh, this is brutal. It's, it's excessively brutal is what this is. I mean, Winter Fox, they've, they can't, it's, it's a shame, right? They came so incredibly close on Nuke, which I think that was actually Echo Fox's own map pick over there. And now here we are on Mirage struggling. Uh, we know Echo Fox likes to pick Mirage themselves, right? They've, they've done this a number of times. I thought it might have been a little mistake in the pregame show, and it's kind of proven to be that way. A little bit of an entry right here. Two members of Echo Fox are going to get cut down, but again, beware of Roka. He's like the guardian of the B site. Maintains the aggression, turns it into a double, and now we've got a little bit of aggression coming in through Connector. Sean Gare is going to be the last man standing, though. He's stuck at the B side. I don't think he's exposed himself, so Winter Fox, they've got options. They don't know where they're going to go. Two and one. Oh, Bosick runs in towards B, and with 
Where's the your bomb teammate? now going down? That makes things so difficult. Yeah, anger was nowhere to be found. No immediate trade. And on a two on one, that's just it's, it's unacceptable, quite honestly. So even if you expect me to be clear, you, you gotta gotta think that the, the risk could be that at this point, yeah, he's an A-side player, but still now anger left in a 1v1. Gare's trusting his 5-7 as he moves back. To a more comfortable spot with his AWP. So knowing that this bomb is down where it's at, you can see he's very weary of a flank coming into fruition as he's covering market. But as we can see, Anger still posted towards ladder. And uh, with 30 seconds remaining, this is going to be very difficult for him. I, I really don't know how he takes here. As maybe he can find a sweet timing. Yeah, okay, Gares has moved off of the angle. And that allows him to get a little bit of a close range angle. But a nice nope. shot from Gares. And he will be able to shut down that two-on-one and salvaging the situation as that was a light buy from Winter Fox. Lots of damage dealt, but at this point, doesn't make a difference. There's so much money on the CT side. Oh, what a what a crying shame right there. I, I just don't even understand that last little two-on-one play. Uh, where, who's that? Flosick comes charging in. He was so incredibly far away from his teammate. There's no chance. There's not not even the slightest chance for a trade right there. Just sort of gifting Sean Garris with a massive kill. Uh, speaking of massive, we have a pretty strong push going down. Two T's charging through underpass, trying to take mid control. Little do they know that uh, Freakazoid has pushed way up on the other side of the smoke. XP3 kind of spamming through. And boom! Freakazoid with that shot takes full mid control up there. Uh, he's going to get traded out from the players down in Connector, but the information has already been granted. That allows Sean Garris to flick his aim to Connector, pick up one more kill, and Shazam, don't show your face, because that's going to happen. And it goes down to Anger. The, the downside to opping from that window room is certainly the fact that your, your barrel extends so far out. Easy for someone to spot you, and that's exactly what Anger did, so... We'll see how they take into A. Gares is still holding this AWP from CT spawn. And Roka, like you have been highlighting, he's been uh, quite the defender towards B. Not that uh, they're coming his way. He will have to retake, and he's lost his teammate. So that makes things a little worrisome. As uh, I was hoping, we might see a 16-0 here. That would be fun. That would be exciting. But, uh, well, I, I, I don't know if this is going to be the case. Roka has a ton of work to do on this retake. Spots oh. out Anger. So that's a first frag coming in in a, in a timely manner. So this is doable, but the bomb plant is so out in the open that he has to force them to actually... Okay, he didn't actually spot the bomb. He goes for the, the tap here. Hades peeks out, doesn't spot him. They know that he's off it. So again, this is so difficult. Roka had to find a 1v1 off of that initial tap. Out of time. But uh, instead, he's going to fall off. So that'll be the round. Winter Fox pick ah! up the first. No, don't get that AWP. It's dangerous. It's suicide, Roka. He goes for it, gets shot in the back, and then he turns around and goes back for the AWP one more time. And you see, you see him just shaking his head. He's like, no, I've, I've, I've made a terrible mistake. I've made a I, huge mistake. Grave decision. Yeah. And indeed, it was a grave decision because it put him right into his grave. And worse, it gave Winter Fox the confidence that maybe they needed. They got around, start stringing them together, boys, because you're running out of T-side rounds. Yeah, I, I gotta see this go 10-5 if I'm uh, hopeful at all for the Winter Fox side, as again, being their map choice. You'd think that they will have a, a solid CT front, but not if they don't have confidence moving into it, as they at least get that first one. But of course, their economy is not good enough to drop this follow-up round. So, gotta bring home the rest of the half like I had highlighted. And there's still money, 5k on a couple players on that CT side, but they have drained quite... Uh, a bit of money. Flow sick. Double entry here. Rix finally fires back. And we'll see Anger actually peeking into this B bomb site all alone. Roka has made his way out of the market. Might be able to find an angle here towards Anger. And Winter Fox is actually rotating the bomb in this direction. Roka finds Anger. So the bomb site definitely not clear. XP3 arrives on the scene. He puts some damage into Roka. He doesn't have the support of his teammates just yet. So if he takes this duel and loses it. Again, they don't want to fight him 1v1v1, but well, it's going to be Rex to able to blindside XP3 2 on 2 now. That's bomb going down. Sean Garris is already just outside the window. He's able to drop the bomb carrier, uh, denying the plant, which means Hades is going to have to go and start pushing the issue, recover the bomb, and then plant it. And that bought just enough time for Rix to start closing the distance, takes that firefight, and he's going to come out on top of Hades. This is just so tragic for uh, for the, the, the chilly Winter Fox boys who are, you know, they're off that one round. They have their, their loss bonus reset, 
and they just don't have any kind of cash. I mean, look, Anger's the only one with anything substantial at the start of the round, and there's clearly discussion going on right now in their team speaker mumble or whatever the heck they're using uh, because they're taking an extremely long time to just get off the starting line. What do we buy? How much money do we spend? What are we going to do? They got three smokes. They're setting up for something on the A site to smoke it off. We'll see. They need a miracle is what, what Winter Fox needs. XP3 has a scout and he's working B apartments. I could, I, I'd give this guy a medal if he found a frag at this close range without armor and someone getting aggressive into him. I, the confidence in this man, I have no idea what the what the idea behind that is. I'd like to see him maybe go top middle instead, much more viable place for that scout. And considering it's an A side play. What is he going to do? Flank quick from underpass with a scout? I just, I, I, I don't understand. So, maybe make some noise here towards B. That could be effective, I suppose. Oh, no. He's already towards A, and oh, the meat grinder. They all fall, and now it's XP3 in the B bomb site with the scout. I, I just don't understand that play at all. As Winter Fox, uh, they're falling apart quite literally. And, uh, yeah, not looking good for XP3. Kind of fell apart with that one player sitting in uh, in Sandwich. Uh, I think it was Ricks. I want to say Ricks and Shazam. One on top of stairs and then one down in Sandwich. And again, you see Winterfox kind of working their way in. Halfway check on the corner, but it was too late. Uh, they're already flipping that mouse the other direction, and then they get two guns dropping right on top of them. Sit crossfire. You also have Sean Garris, who's been playing down way back towards CT. Uh, I don't think he's all that much of an impact player so far. Yeah, you see him sitting towards the bottom of the scoreboard here, 12, 1, and 5. But that's okay. I mean, he's sitting there. He's backing off, playing for retake. And most importantly, calling those CT side strats. There's some aggression. Shazam opening up the next round. XP3 shut down and... Uh, yeah, that, that, that pressure from Roka just adds insult to injury now, doesn't it, Sprawl? It certainly does. Flow sick and anger. Last one's up in the round. And, well, they've got mid control. That's that's exciting, right? As anger is at the top boxes. Flow sick is coming out of underpass. They've got a smoke Molotov and an HE grenade. So, not uh, necessarily a plethora of utility. But maybe they can work together to create a favorable situation for themselves. I'd like to see Flosick use this smoke to cover maybe cats so they can go connector together. He is able to lurk into jungle for free. So all of a sudden that does open up the round quite a bit here. Anger's just going to stay put. If he can lurk through market and find some success. Oh, freak. Freakazoid is actually watching that direction, but goes down. So if they split B here, maybe, just maybe, they can make something out of this. Yeah, Flow6 is charging in alone once again. If he can get the, the, the kill on Roka, that would be great. Roka knows something's going on. Gets hit from the back. It's just enough of a distraction right here to allow him to go down. And it's up to Shazam. Jumps around the corner. Surprise! Misses the shot because it was just too close range. He didn't expect Flow6 to be holding that super tight angle. And uh, yeah, Anger defended the bomb. Doing a nice job over here. Ricks is kept at a good distance. That headshot's certainly going to help. And he knows he's got one more player to deal with. Spots the corner of Flow Six shoulder. Takes the fight. Damn. Shoots him in the back. Running away like a coward. Yeah, that was Winter too Fox harsh. taking two individual duels with Ricks. And Ricks just flexing his gun, so to speak. He's at 25, 4, and 5. And the guy ended the last map with 33 kills. Like, this guy is just going off right yeah. now. Echo Fox... You can see the rest of the scoreboard. 25 on Ricks. The next is Roka on 13. They got 12, 12, and 6. And again, Freakazoid, bottom frag, I believe. Yeah, 14 frags in the last map. He's got 6 here. And that's one of the guys that you expect maybe to get a little bit more uh, going. So luckily, they've got, uh, again, Ricks doing big things as we'll see Winter Fox. Maybe they can get the last round of this first half. But 13 to 2, not yeah. good when you uh, pick this map. No, no, not at all. It was, a, it, was a, it was a dodgy pick right there. Maybe they've been working on anti-stratting, but I'll tell you one thing. You do not anti-strat Sean Garris, the king of the anti-strat, right? 13-1, super dodgy situation, dodgy buy with the Galil's 1 AK-47. Freak, so it's going to start getting a little bit aggressive. Jumps up, he makes out a single shot, and now here is Rix doing what he does best, picking up multiple frags. He's finally going to get killed, but he did his job baiting the shots for Shazam. Shazam's going to close out the round, turning this into a depressing 14 and one half in favor 
of Winter Fox. Not a lot of positives to pull from that for the Winter Fox side. That's uh, that's for certain. As you had mentioned, they're, they're kind of looking cold and not not the kind of cold that it's like, oh, it's cold blooded. This guy kills anyone. Like just just uh, cold blooded murder. Not that kind of cold. They're, they're just looking straight, just just actual cold. They're they're not coming alive at all on their T side. And maybe on their CT front, they can make something work. Obviously, starts with pistol, but when you only have one round, you have no room for mistakes at all. So uh, this. Definitely should be a 2-0 best of three victory for Echo Fox moving forward. Again, this is our first best of three of the day. We got plenty more on the horizon, but uh, this is looking like a quick 2-0. If you ask me, Winter Fox, we'll see what they can get done on their pistol, though. Uh, yeah, it's certainly going to be a tall order. It's possible. Anything's possible, but, I mean, at this point, you got to admit, Winter Fox was always going to be the underdog going into this one right here they've they haven't been playing these big major LAN events uh like a lot of the teams in echo fox uh you know with the ecs and the, the e-league and all that have been doing instead they've just been practicing and uh well you know may, maybe you have to go in and play some actual games at some actual events to to stay up on the meta of uh of what's happening echo fox just clearly dominant they're not gonna get hyper aggressive though winter fox is gonna chill out <laughs> literally Wintry, chill out, and wait for the push. There we go. Gonna smoke Cat and work their way up Connector. Hades with the first kill. Here is trying to frag oh, yeah. right back, but he's dropped by Hades. So that's the bomb now in the hands of the CT side, but the player advantage to the T's as they've got a full minute. Ricks is coming in from A, and then they've got the flank from Freakazoid, and Shazam is actually up spot. boosted towards middle, but... Ricks will go down to XP3, Freakazoid onto Hades, it's now only XP3, and they've collected the bomb, now headed back towards the B-bomb site, so going to be very difficult for XP3. Luckily, he's got a kit, flash, and armor, so he's uh, salvaged what his team has picked up in the round, and maybe it'll give him a shot, but going to be difficult. Yeah, it's extremely difficult. Basically, XP3 needs to isolate these players one at a time. You see him starting to work his way around the corner. Echo Fox playing discipline. I think they're trying to set up a crossfire so that they can uh, just trade kill. So spots them out. Shazam peeks the corner. And that's teamwork right there. You know, take the 1-2-1-2. One, two, yeah, one, two, distract XP3. Look at that post plant where it's a 2-on-1. One, one, almost identical situation to what we saw with Rix retaking from Cat. And look how well Echo Fox plays together in that situation. Whereas Winter Fox, on the other hand, were taking fights when they didn't have that kind of crossfire grouped up play. So so, uh, again, excellent work here from Echo Fox. They've really just stayed true to the fundamentals. And on top of that, you got Ricks. He's two away from 30 frags. He's died seven times. The guy's just beasting at the moment. So, hard to uh, battle back against something like that, as this could be the final round of this best of three. Winter Fox, ill equipped to say the least. But they have the st they've stacked the right bomb site. So, they got that going for them. But, uh, well, that's about all they have going for them as they're dropping one by one. It's Hades and XP3 left. Try and find this two on three. Ooh, that's nasty though. Echo Fox doing kind of the big risk play, charging straight on out. I think that was what, four players? Just straight out of Palace. So it's gonna be the waterfall to plant the bomb and uh, try to take the aim duels and overpower Winter Fox. Turning into a little bit of a meat grinder after the fact, but not quite enough. Winter Fox could not close this deal out. And uh, yeah, there you have it. Let's go ahead and update these scores here. And uh, 